Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to IMSC 780 Methods of OR, uh, Nonlinear Programming Part 2. And today we're going to talk about uh, using SciPy Optimize a library, uh, several, introduce several uh, more uh, commonly used uh, algorithm and to solve nonlinear programming problem. Uh, first uh, algorithm I want to introduce is the so-called BFGS method. This is one of the most popular method uh, to solve uh, at least a median size of optimization problem. The, uh, the name of this algorithm is, uh, is actually for last name of the inventor of these, uh, Boyden and Fletcher and Goldberg and Shannon. And these four famous professors actually uh, invented this algorithm. The underlying uh, theoretical methods for this algorithm, they try to, and the BFGS method also uh, refers as a so-called quasi-Newton method. So it's an, a method to solve uh, nonlinear programming. And instead of using their true Hessian function, which is second derivative of the objective function, they use directly, they're using a approximation uh, of the uh, Hessian function. In this case, they can save a lot of uh, computational effort to recalculate the inverse of <clears throat> Hessian function at each, each, each uh, iteration. So <clears throat> that is the, uh, the origins or the uh, concept of the BFGS method we so-called. Again, <clears throat> we're going to uh, using the Rosenberg function to test this uh, algorithm. <clears throat> we start with the SciPy a library, including. <clears throat> so we're going to import the uh, SciPy.optimize uh, library and import their minimize uh, uh, function and the Rosenberg function. Um, since the BFGS method using the uh, Jacobian function, okay, the uh, first derivative, so what we uh, come up with uh, is the derivative for uh, Jacobian function for this Rosenberg function, okay? And then <clears throat> x naught right here. Is, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. X naught is the initial solution guess. That's we call it starting point for the in, uh, initial solution, and we're trying to call the minimize Rosenberg function. X naught is the initial uh, solution. The method is called BFGS. BFGS, and the Jacobian function is calculated by this user defined function called Rosen derivatives. <clears throat> and I want to, uh, the option is trying to display everything. <clears throat> so it takes about uh, <clears throat> Rosenberg function objective value is zero, takes about 26 iteration, uh, function evaluation 30 times. So I can actually print out the entire solution with <clears throat> the function value, the Hessian inverse, currently they estimate it, and the message stays the optimization terminates successfully, <clears throat> number of functional evaluation, 30, number of iteration, 25, okay, number of Jacobian, which is first derivative evaluation is 30 as well, and finally, this is the uh, <clears throat> solution. And next method also is very practical in a sense, <clears throat> and is called Newton method. But in the implementation of in in SciPy, it combines the uh, it combines the uh, con uh, Newton's method with the conjugate gradient algorithm. So this method in the SciPy library is referring as a so-called uh, Newton conjugate gradient method, okay? And using <clears throat> a second derivative, 
Tyler expansion of the original function using the first derivatives right here and the second derivative h is the passion function <clears throat> so we should be able to using a, a quadratic approximation for the original function and calculate the optimal for that uh, quadratic approximation so this is what we <clears throat> as refer as exact Newton method by using the conjugate gradient uh, derivative. So here we have this uh, <coughs> Rosenberg function and the first derivative and the second derivative, which is the Hessian function. <coughs> it's a banded uh, diagonal function. So <coughs> now we define the Hessian uh, matrix for the Rosenberg function with the four. Once we define that, this is really straightforward. The using calling the <coughs> psi pi minimize Rosen function x naught is initial initial solution guess. Method is called Newton's and conjugate gradient. The Jacobian is referring to the Rosenberg derivative uh, function we defined it. Hessian is a Rosenberg Hessian function we defined it. <coughs> x torrents if the x torrents is, is ten to the negative a, which is the torrents of the changes for x's uh, from iteration to iteration. So we can solve this problem and get a similar result. <coughs> you see that number of func uh, functional evaluation thirty three number of hashing evaluations 24 number of iteration is 24 and number of jacobian evaluation 33 so it determines uh, to successfully means it finds an optimal and below is the uh, solution you can probably tell the newton's and conjugate gradient method it's a little bit more uh, precise than uh, the BFGS method we mentioned earlier, and also take a fewer functional evaluation. The main reason is has been, has been using the exact Hessian function instead of approximate Hessian function. <coughs> so the BFGS method don't need any Hessian information. It's trying to uh, <coughs> it's trying to approximate it using approximation. Okay. The next algorithm I'm trying to <clears throat> discuss with you is the so-called trust region uh, for uh, Newton, uh, Newton and conjugate gradient algorithm. Mm -hmm. In SciPy optimized, it is this is referred as a trust dash NCG, uh, similar to the Newton conjugate gradient algorithm we uh, referring earlier, but <clears throat> using a trust region to specify what type of uh, how far away you uh, the current solution to the next solution you trust your approximation <clears throat> this type of method uh, for medium size and small size problem didn't have too much of an advantage but <clears throat> with the larger size or non-convex uh, objective function Many times, this method creates a more reliable solution and actually fast convergencies. <clears throat> we give you the uh, references down there for these. Again, we just have to change the method itself. The rest of the parameters using in the function call is exactly the same. <clears throat> it creates a, a much more precise solution and less iteration. Okay, so this method takes each iteration takes a little bit more computational effort, but it creates much more uh, precise result and calculation. So the, if for mid-size uh, nonlinear programming problem, and this is a, a very uh, appealing method for for that. I have a few more example for you, and let's take a look. Uh, the trust region method nearly exact algorithm okay there's a several variation of the same thing and 
often produce a very good result for the Rosenberg function. The Rosenberg function is so famous, so all these uh, nonlinear programming algorithms actually uh, using it as a standard test function. Uh, I want you to be able to actually, <clears throat> uh, in the future, if I replace the Rosenberg function to another function, see if your algorithm actually can converge as well. Okay. Finally, this lecture, we're going to uh, talk about so-called constraint minimization problem with uh, uh, multiple variable. And this is a small example I have. It's a minimized x1 and x2 are the both uh, <coughs> two variable function, x1 minus x0, x0 and x1. So x1 minus x0 square and to the square plus one minus x0 square. So these are the objective function. And then we have a series of uh, constraints. So for the industrial engineering or linear programming or nonlinear programming lecture, we had in lecture uh, uh, 10 and nine, it should be uh, pretty much familiar with the format of an optimi mathematical optimization problem. And x0 is between 0 and 1. x1 is between negative 5 and 2. So, <clears throat> so here we've been trying to show you how to do this. Okay. So we're going to start to calling the uh, side pi optimal. So I'm going to import bounds. There are three different types of constraint. First constraint is bound which is the lower and upper bound for each one of the variable. And this is coming in the so-called vector tuple. So we have a two variable. So we have a bound for each one of those. So this is very similar to set up as a linear programming for each variable who has bound. We're using this kind of format. So uh, a bound actually uh, including one tuple, the first, that's for S, uh, x1 and x2 is the upper bound for x1, uh, x0 and x2, x1. And the second one is so-called linear uh, constraint. The linear constraint we have right here, we have a several different type. We have a so-called inequality constraint and we have a equality constraint. So how we represent that in our model, <clears throat> right? So here we have this constraint x0 plus 2x1 less than or equals to 1 and <clears throat> defining 2x0 plus x1 equals to 1. So we're going to represent it in this linear, uh, this, uh, sorry, the uh, matrix format. So 1 and 2, 2 and 1, and x0 and x1 is less than or equals to 1 and 1 greater than negative uh, infinity to one. So for the second constraint, actually lower and both lower and upper bound are equals to one. So first we're going to set up the constraint, the, <coughs> the constraint uh, coefficient matrix is one, two, two, one, one, two, two, one. Okay, and uh, giving the lower and the upper bound for each one of the constraints. So negative infinity and one, which is this part, and one and one is the right upper bound. We can also define nonlinear constraint <clears throat> in that way. So we can define several nonlinear function and use that as, okay, so this, oh, sorry, this is a, a nonlinear constraint. We're gonna ca calculate its Jacobian matrix and we can calculate its Hessian matrix in that sense. <clears throat> So define the original object, uh, original constraint function, okay, as it is. All right, so it's a, a vector, two of those original objective function. Define their Jacobian, okay. It's also a two tuple vector. Define the Hessian matrix as well for those. <clears throat> then we can define the nonlinear constraint using cons original constraint function and the negative <clears throat> negative infinity 
and positive uh, upper bound and Jacobian function and Hessian function. So that's what we have <coughs> so far. Okay. And after that, we can call the, uh, the solution and we can actually, here, here are the several way to define different uh, nonlinear constraint and or linear constraints. So these are the uh, detail you can go over yourself. And finally, we solve this again using the trust uh, uh, region Newton method with the constraint and defining the Jacobian matrix and the Hessian matrix for the Rosenberg function and putting linear constraint, nonlinear constraint into the constraint parameter and also giving the bound constraint as well. So these are the solution actually takes about uh, 12 iteration, uh, the number of functional evaluation for as uh, A, number of hashing uh, evaluation is A as well, number of <coughs> uh, Jacobian, uh, Jacobian evaluations also A times, and optimality is two, uh, almost three to the negative nine, so that's uh, pretty close to zero uh, for the optimality condition and give you the so final solution. So this type of thing is a little bit more complicated, and but this is uh, fairly straightforward. You can continue with this and using a different uh, method called SR1 method. Uh, so these are the, finally, this is the uh, references for BFGS method and uh, uh, Newton's trust region Newton method. Finally, we're going to uh, introduce a sequentially square uh, programming algorithm or the SLSQ algorithm is typically solving for standard uh, nonlinear programming problem with objective function with <coughs> uh, what we call the a newer system, which is the right-hand side equals to zero. Okay, <clears throat> they have uh, uh, a little bit more unique way to defining uh, the constraint, inequality constraint, inequality constraint, uh, right here. And these are the constraint function and the Jacobian of the constraint, if it's nonlinear. Uh, equality constraint is the same thing, the functional constraint. If it's a multiple variable, you have a multiple tuples right here and the Jacobian of that constraint and you can directly supply right here. And this is a very simple uh, minimize Rosenberg using the a sequential least square uh, uh, quadratic programming algorithm. This algorithm is very stable, uh, very reliable and has a high accuracy uh, for most of the mid size uh, linear programming problem. So this is using a quadratic approximation for all the uh, general uh, objective function. So you see this function actually takes about four iteration and five functional evaluation and finds the optimal solution. So this algorithm is a fairly uh, <coughs> reliable and it's highly recommended in many of the uh, application. I'm going to uh, conclude this section. We'll continue to the uh, different talk about different topics in the next section.